Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Tanner here and welcome back to another Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 saddest moments throughout the entirety of Ninjago. Now, just like I did with my top 10 uh, darkest moments video a few days ago, as of the time of recording this video, uh, we're going to go ahead and rank these here. And just like that video, there will not be any specific order in which these are actually ranked. So I guess technically they're not ranked, but these are just 10 sad moments from Ninjago that I thought were very memorable and that I thought should be, you know, shared once again with you guys and this is a remake of a video that I did a while ago actually quite a few years ago now that I'm thinking about it I believe two years two years ago so if you guys remember that video hats off to you but we're gonna go ahead and break this down here again I have 10 scenes here to basically discuss you know my picks for these saddest Ninjago scenes and once again these are not in any specific order and if there's something that you thought should have been on the list feel free to leave it down below in the comments these are just 10 of what I chose there's not really any specific amount of sad scenes in Ninjago these are just 10 that I wanted to put on the list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this list here with our first pick. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be discussing is Garmadon's death scene from the fourth season of Ninjago. Now, it's not really an actual death as much as it is a sacrifice. I mean, Garmadon didn't actually, you know, canonically die in the series until the fifth season when the Cursed Realm was actually brought down. But this is where he got to say his, you know, goodbye to the actual Ninjago land as it is. And this is the last time that the majority of the ninja team ever Ever saw Garmadon again. Basically, Garmadon sacrificed himself to banish the Anachondri generals to the Cursed Realm. Of course, by sacrificing himself, he actually opened the realm and caused the real Anachondri generals to be free. And they all sort of went ahead and possessed all of the fake Anachondri generals led by Chen. And this was done with a sad montage of Lloyd and Garmadon's adventures as Lloyd reflects on his father's sacrifice. And it's really sad, you guys. I mean, like I said in my previous video, Ninjago is pretty much much just a kid's show, but that doesn't mean that they can have some darker or more mature moments in there, and this sacrifice scene with Garmadon and Lloyd reflecting on that fact is definitely one of the saddest things from the show. Next up, we have the scene in Season 4 in which Zane discovers that Pixel has been dismantled after his rebirth. So, towards the end of Season 3, Zane sacrificed himself, and don't worry, that will be on this list. Uh, you'll see it a little later on. But after Zane sacrificed himself, he somehow ended up on Chen's island with Pixel. Zane was, of course, in his new titanium form, as he had just rebuilt himself. But when he finally came to, and he was fully conscious again, he unfortunately came to the realization that Pixel was dismantled and was no longer in a physical body. It was a very heartbreaking scene in which Zane tried to go ahead and say goodbye to Pixel, but he had another idea planned, and Pixel ultimately did not die, but instead, for the time being, she was uploaded in Zane's consciousness through a flash drive. Who would have thought? But yeah, Pixel sort of lived on in Zane's head throughout the rest of the series, or at least up until the Season 7 arc in which she actually became physical again, but for a while there, she was only just a vision in Zane's head after her dismantlement, and that initial scene with Zane and Pixel realized that fact is you know quite heartbreaking to say the least I mean I thought it was sad it's definitely not the saddest thing from season 4 but it's definitely sad enough to be put on this list Springboarding off of that scene, we do have another scene from Season 4, in which it's another Zane and Pixel scene also, but it's Zane basically reflecting on the fact that he is no longer the White Ninja anymore, and he's basically, as he puts it, just a replica. Now this is after Zane sort of had his initial identity crisis early on in the season, after he came, or, you know, became fully aware of his surroundings and all that, he became fully aware of his new consciousness, and this scene is rather heartbreaking because, again, it's with the dismantled Pixel, and she basically reassures Zane that in fact he is the original Zane just brought back while this new version of Zane is not so sure and seeing Zane go through this identity crisis is really heartbreaking to see especially considering how Zane you know throughout the entire season so far had just come back and he's you know supposedly getting used to his new body but now he's kind of second guessing himself it's quite difficult to watch but it also ends in a really inspirational scene so it's not that sad and it's definitely one of the least saddest ones on the entire list but I still thought it was necessary to put on here because it's another Zane scene and Zane scenes are often very sad most of the time. You'll see a few more of those on this list later on as we go along. Speaking of which, here's another one. Zane in the tree with his departed father during his flashback sequence in the first season of Ninjago. So Zane discovers that he's ultimately a robot for the very first time in this scene. And it's really sad because he goes on this montage, you know, when he's suddenly gaining his memory back, he's getting all these recollections back in his head, and he sees his father there. And his father was, of course, departed at this point. He had since died, uh, you know, after he went ahead and actually built Zane. He died in between that time and the time that Zane went back to the tree and discovered that he was a robot. And this 
initial uh, montage of flashbacks is actually really heartbreaking. I remember watching this when I was young and just seeing just how dark Ninjago could actually get in nature and just how sad the series can be. While it is an upbeat and campy show most of the time, a lot of the scenes do hold some sort of emotional value to them, and this scene is no exception. Zane crying at the end definitely signifies that this scene was in fact very sad and very emotional for him, just as it was for the audience, and I still can't believe that a scene like that ended up in one of the earlier days of Ninjago, as a lot of these sadder scenes are mainly kept for, you know, later Ninjago seasons, but this scene was definitely one of the pioneers in bringing the sadness to the Ninjago and giving the show more depth as a result. Next up, we have the demise of Moro during season 5. Towards the end of the season, Master Wu attempts to save Moro after the City of Sticks has been vanquished by the Preeminent and Nia had destroyed the Preeminent with her water. Uh, Moro suddenly gets captured by the Preeminent and is basically, you know, brought down to his death. Of course, ghosts cannot touch water, and Moro's just about to die when Master Wu goes over and attempts to save him. Moro, on the other hand, replies, you can only save those who want to be saved, gives Wu the Realm Crystal, and, you know, promptly vaporized as a result. Now, this scene is very sad, not only because Moro is a great character, but also because this was the start of Moro's whole redemption arc. If you guys don't remember, during Day of the Departed, Moro came back for a brief period of time, and he was a good guy. He was actually somewhat decent to Master Wu and the ninja. He wanted to help them out, and that's a direct result of this scene here. Master Wu went ahead to save Moro after he was almost pulled to his death. He eventually was, but there was that brief instance of hope there for Moro that maybe he could become more than just a villain. Maybe he could become an actual ally to the ninja. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen in Moro's case because, again, he vaporized, but this scene was very touching and very sad because it showed an old relationship between master and student finally rekindled again after several years. Next, we have the initial scene in which Cole becomes a ghost. So this scene is very sad to me personally, specifically because of the moment in which Cole realizes that his worst fears have come true. He has become a ghost, so very interesting there. And this would go ahead and pave the way for many character arcs surrounding Cole in the future, and it would definitely go ahead and signify his character even more in the series and make him a more prominent figure as well, because this was the initial start to the rebirth of Cole, is what I like to call it. Basically, Cole was kind of left in the dark throughout a lot of Ninjago, and bringing him into a ghost and actually having him experience this is also very helpful for his character, but that doesn't mean that it was also sad. You can see Cole is very depressed in this scene, he doesn't really want this to happen, and that leads into the next episode as well, but overall, this entire situation, at least in my opinion, was one of these saddest things in Ninjago. Next up, we have the scene in which Harumi actually dies. So yes, unfortunately, Harumi is dead within the canon of the show. So people who want her back, I'm sorry, but she's probably not coming back. I mean, there's a possibility that she might, but more than likely she's just dead. But this scene wasn't really the saddest thing to come from Ninjago, especially not from season nine, in my opinion, but it was definitely one of the most iconic moments, specifically for its shock value and for its sadness, I suppose, because Harumi died, yeah, but she was a villain, right? Well, just like Moro, Harumi basically went Went on a redemption arc of sorts, starting in that episode, just like Moro did. And if you ask me, this is basically another instance of a villain realizing their faults and coming to terms with them. Unfortunately, it's too late, and they actually did perish as a result. Harumi uh, was on top of a building as it collapsed. Garmadon saw this happen. All of the ninja saw this happen, and she's probably actually dead now. So that's unfortunate for Harumi fans out there, and it's definitely uh, unfortunate for her character because, again, it's one of those instances, like I mentioned earlier, with Moro, where the villain suddenly, you know, begins his or her redemption and realizes what they're doing wrong and tries to stop it. You know, Harumi tried to turn it around for a brief period of time there, and she also prevented another situation you know, from happening, you know, the same type of situation that she was in when she was young that basically set her up as a villain. So that's quite redeemable for her character, and it's unfortunate that she had to perish in this way. Next up, we have Nia's death. So, so many deaths on this list, but death is sad, believe it or not, in terms of, you know, actual Ninjago and in real life in most cases. But yeah, Nia's death, while temporary, was very sad for the moment for what it was. Of course, she was accidentally hit by an arrow, or not an arrow, but a syringe which contained Tiger Widow Venom, which was directed towards Nauticon to actually kill Nauticon, but it ended up hitting Nia, which, if you guys don't know, the Venom is fatal to humans, so that's why she ended up dying there. But yeah, Nia's death was quite sad. She fell in Jay's arms, basically said a farewell to him, and died as a result. In front of Jay and all the rest of the ninja, Jay was sad, the ninja were sad, and we were sad. This was an overall very sad scene. While it's not the most emotional death throughout Ninjago, I would say it's probably one of the saddest, 
but like a lot of Ninjago deaths, it was instantly reversed as time was reversed, so Nia's death was reversed and undone, which is kind of unfortunate considering how most of the time in Ninjago, death is meaningless, but you know, I guess it's okay. I mean, Nia's back now and everybody's happy, but that initial scene where she died was actually really sad. Next up, we have the scene in season one in which Kai is in the volcano trying to get the fang blade from falling in the, in the lava, you know, to prove his actual worth, while Lloyd is sort of sitting there off to the side, you know, covered with lava. He's not really doing so well, and Kai makes the decision to go ahead and save him. This scene is a mix of emotions. It's inspirational, it's sad, it's motivational, it's pretty much everything in between, but I think it's really important because Kai's character arc definitely went ahead and transitioned in this season, and he definitely went ahead and realized his mistakes, as early on in the season he was kind of, you know, arrogant in that way, but now he's finally coming back from it. He's actually doing better for himself, which is really nice to see, and overall, guys, it definitely made for the better scene overall. Now, again, this scene really isn't that sad, but it is kind of sad to see Kai make a decision such as this. He either gets to redeem himself or save Lloyd, and he chooses Lloyd, much to the delight of Garmadon, who goes ahead and receives Lloyd later, thanks Kai for his efforts, and then it's revealed that Lloyd is the green ninja. So overall, I wouldn't really call this scene sad it was kind of just you know motivational in that way but in a way it also is kind of sad because we get to see Kai finally accept his fate which again is kind of sad for his character but also great for his character because it was developed even more from that and the overall I guess development of the scene in general was really nice it was nice to see you know progression from point A to point B to point C and there was a mix of emotions through there as well including lots of sadness so that's why I'm putting it on the list and lastly here you guys knew this one was coming Zane's death in the third season of Ninjago. This is instantly the first thing that I think of when I think of sad Ninjago scenes. This scene has it all. Zane has been with us since the beginning of Ninjago, and seeing him sacrifice himself like this was rather heartbreaking, and it, it definitely had one of those montages in there as well to sort of signify the heartbreak coming as Zane sacrificed himself against the Overlord and actually managed to defeat him once and for all, as far as we know. But yeah, the uh, the sad montage plays. It's very sad again. Uh, Zane thanks his friends before departing, which is also really sad. And the immediate next scene after Zane's sacrifice is a funeral for Zane, in which sadness is the only emotion going on here. But there's also a little bit of hope as a snowflake falls onto Kai, and he looks up and there's more snowflakes. It's just so great. And this scene overall was really nicely done. I loved this episode overall. This is one of my favorite Ninjago episodes of all time for this specific reason. Zane's sacrifice is the most memorable thing, in my opinion, to come out of the third season of Ninjago, and it would definitely set up Zane's character for future seasons to come, but it's no secret that Zane's sacrifice, while being really sweet and really motivational, the entire scene was rather, you know, actually pretty sad. So like my top 10 darkest Ninjago moments video, it's no secret that Ninjago is a children's show, but there's just so much going on within the structure of the show and the characters themselves, it's too much to ignore, and you know, saying that it's just a kid show and dismissing it like that is kind of foolish considering how these characters have come so far, and these characters mean so much to everybody, they're so motivational and inspirational, and a lot of that does have to do with the downfalls that they face throughout the show, and I've listed 10 of them here. And I'm sure that there are other moments from Ninjago that are also very sad. This is just a list of my 10 that I had chosen, and you can have a different list if you want. Leave that in the comments. I look forward to reading that. This was just my list of my personal favorite choices for the saddest Ninjago moments. And again, if there's something that you thought should have been on the list, it might be in my top 10 darkest Ninjago moments video, so be sure to go check that out if you have not seen that yet. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. That'll just about do it for this video here. If you enjoyed the video, as always, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up rating, and of course, remember to hit the subscribe button if you've not done so already. Once again, guys, the comment section is there for the various discussions that you would like to have regarding this topic, or if you just had a comment of a general nature, that's fine as well. In the description, you will find links towards my other forms of social media, whether it be my Twitter, my Instagram, my Patreon, or my merch. Be sure to support me on all those platforms if you would like to. With that being said, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video once again. My name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell. Mm -hmm.